There's not a lot here. With the next step in the propeller making process, after adding an extra half an hour to uh, draw in the blue lines on both the top and bottom sides of the laminae, it's now time to start gluing them together. And so I have the four smallest clamps I've got and some araldite. And also, not to be forgotten, we have some packing blocks. And then there's another five minutes or so in setting up a dry run to make sure everything lines up before mixing the glue for the first lamination. You also got to count your packing blocks and make sure you've got enough of them because once you mix the glue, it's all got to happen. And you have to pre-open your clamps to the right dimensions just to save yourself a little bit of time when the glue is going off. So, you get all set up with everything in place. And yeah, at about this time, there's five hours worth of work gone into preparing the laminae, getting them to the point where they're ready to be glued together. And then, spread out your glue and start to mix it. You don't actually have to stay inside the glue lines because it's going to get squeezed out anyway. But it gives you some idea of where you have to actually get the glue to go. You can't miss anywhere on the inside of the glue lines. Okay. Make sure we've got lamination A lined up with lamination A. And then we come in. Get a block. Get a block. Check our alignment. We come in. Very gently, tentatively clamp that alignment. Loosen it. Wiggle it to get the central axis in the correct alignment. Gently tighten it again. Put a block on, check the alignment. Block on, add another clamp, making sure that the second clamp is big enough But you can work its pommy bar over the top of the first clamp. That's fairly important. Then put your other clamps on so that the tips while the glue 
and still wet. Crank up your compression ratios to force the glue into the wood. And I generally run the end of the fingertip in there. It's something to try and get the excess glue out of the corner because otherwise you've just got to carve it but no, that's all going off now so the next trick is go and have a cup of coffee and come back in an hour and take the clamps off and do it again with the next lamination or lamina lamina and then you can see it so yeah it's all kind of preparation and allowing for the fact that the camera wasn't running for all of the time probably about mm, six or seven minutes for each glue line so yeah, it's really only going to be like 15 minutes spread out over three hours to glue the laminate together into what will become a serrated propeller blank but allowing for setup time and frigging around let's call it 10 minutes for each glue line so that's half an hour spread out over three four hours just to glue the blank but you know such are the perils of bespoke propeller carving making one propeller and then changing the design and making another propeller if you are interested in mass production of aeroplane propellers in chapter eight regarding air screws an automatic profiling machine for shaping wooden air screws. The metal master blade can be seen at the bottom. This view has been taken from the rear of the machine and the blade being shaped is of the fixed pitch type. Stages in the manufacture of wooden air screws. A. A block composed of boards glued together. To the end of each is fastened a length of hard wood. The hardwood root is turned and screw cut to receive a steel sleeve. The block is then shaped by an automatic profiling machine. D. Arrangement of the roughly shaped boards for a fixed pitch air screw prior to gluing. E. The air screw after shaping. F. The ribs for the cowl are attached by glue and screws before the addition of a plywood cover for the spinner. 1941 textbook has one two best part of three pages on wooden air screws then it talks about metal air screws for one paragraph followed by half a page of conclusion moving right along to the 1941 edition engineering school fitters 2a carpenter riggers and flight riggers engineering notes not to be reproduced because this is secret, fellas. We have a cross section cutaway. And cellulose paint, cellulose sheet, brass, sheeping, gauze, fabric, and wood. And we're showing how the Air Force measures pitch angle, tip tracking error, manufacturing speaks of. Laminate, cementing, aging, boring and drilling, shaping, inspection, balancing, fabric covering, lacquering, metal sheathing, final balance, tests of air screws, reconditioning, marks on a reconditioned air screw, general notes on air screws, variable pitch air screw operation, description of parts.
This is how much trouble you have to go to to be better than wood. Description of all the parts, removal of air screw shaft, fitting to air screw shaft, constant speed air screws, constant speed control unit, principle of operation, constant speed control, hydromatic air screw, general construction principles of operations, pages and pages and pages on metal air screws because even by 1941 they were obviously the way of the future, or so it seemed, here in Oz. However, the funny thing is that um, as engines became more powerful during the Second World War, in both Britain and Germany, designers turned to wooden laminated blades, some of which were pressure impregnated with phenolic resin before the laminae were glued together. This is a piece of resin impregnated black walnut which came out of Sydney University in about 1939 perhaps, 36, when a local yokel by the name of Neville Fakes was on the first course to study aeronautical engineering in Australia. And the fact of the matter is that today in 2019, if you're restoring a Spitfire or a Messerschmitt or a Focke-Wulf or a Hawker Hurricane or perhaps a Lancaster, you've got to go to Germany to get the laminated wooden blades for their rotol propellers because that's the only place in the world where they make replacement laminated wooden blades for 1,000, 2,000, 2,500 horsepower piston engines. But as I've understood since I was a teenager, if you haven't got a machine like this, then what I'm doing is the only really reliable way for a backyard amateur to make a propeller that's functional. Which will track reasonably straight and true, which will balance reasonably well, and which will perform at something in excess of 80-85% aeromechanical efficiency at turning torque into thrust. And it doesn't matter if your air screw is 4 foot diameter, 8 feet diameter, or eight inches in diameter. The principles are the same, and you have to go through all the same steps if you want it to spin without shaking and perform efficiently. Okay. So one hour down the track and we're back with a new toothpick. And before proceeding, I like to do a bit of a, a tip track test. That ain't too bad. So, with everything prepared, we have a go at the next lamination. It's turned into being about a 20 minute struggle, but it worked, more or less, kind of thing. I'm Fairly confident, back in another hour for the final lamination. Okay, three down, one to go. And the fourth lamination is under the clamps. So that's another hour's work. in the process. Okay. Done. The blank is glued and the clamps are coming off. And in another day when the glue has cured It'll be time to start carving. Six and a half hours to get to this stage. If I was using templates, I could probably cut three quarters of an hour off that. And if I was <coughs> copying a previous propeller and I didn't have to design the section 
before transferring the information across I could cut another hour off that so about five hours worth before you're ready to even begin to think about starting to carve and it's the same on a big one warbles on a lot to YouTube ciao